Well, I'm glad to tell you some of the things I remember. I wouldn't be willing to do that about many folk who've been at Trinity and <laughs> retired or, uh, or have transferred to elsewhere. But about Dr. Archer, it's an open book. And I really don't mind uh, saying what I actually think and remember uh, by God days. Some of them may be a little different from what you ex would expect. Actually, I came to know Dr. Archer first a couple centuries ago <laughs> when he was a assist assistant pastor in Park Street Church under Dr. Harold Ockengay. I was very, very suspicious of him. I uh, thought he was probably a covert liberal. <laughs> and I had two counts against him. The first was that he was the assistant of Dr. Ockengay. Now, I had come from a very uptight fundamentalist background after I got converted. <laughs> And it was it was so uptight that uh, some of you possibly might recall Carl McIntyre as the leader of the uh, super evangelical forces or super fundamentalist forces. Well, he was the uh, mastermind behind the seminary where I went to school. And I remember that he was warning the Christian public that uh, evangelicalism and fundamentalism should be careful because there were there were enemies afloat, uh, liberals like uh, Harry Emerson Fosdick, and uh, Emil Brunner, and Karl Barth, and uh, on down the line, Reinhold Niebuhr, long list of them. In fact, he had a football team of them, 11 of them. <laughs> he considered them the first team of the opponents of evangelicalism. But then he had a second team. And the captain of his second team was Dr. Harold John Ockenkin. <laughs> and uh, so naturally, I was very suspicious of somebody who would be an assistant of Dr. Harold John Ockenkin. Then I had a second count against him. He was from Princeton. And I had long learned that no good thing had ever come out of Princeton <laughs> since 1929. <laughs> Major left. So uh, I, I was terribly suspicious of this young fellow. But I met him and um, found out that he was human, even though he was under great suspicion from me. That was my first encounter. My, first, my second encounter was at Winona Lake Summer School of Theology. Do you remember that? I do indeed. Well, I was dean of that outfit long before I became dean here. And amongst the illustrious scholars that we had come there to uh, the summer school for the latter part of June, July, and August was Dr. Gleason Archer from Fuller. In fact, the summer school there at one time, while I was dean, was actually affiliated as a sort of extension of Fuller Summer, of Fuller Seminary on the West Coast. This was their extension school, just as a summer school in the middle of summer. And so he came out to uh, share the goodies that he was handing out at Fuller with uh, those of us who were at, uh, at uh, the summer school there in Winona Lake, Indiana. Then my third encounter with him uh, brings us into relationship with Trinity Evangelical Divinity School. Trinity was just beginning to uh, reorganize itself uh, back in 1963 and 64, and we were looking around for first-rate scholars. In fact, the principle uh, was this. Uh, we needed a, we need a we need an Old Testament scholar. Well, Jerome is dead. <laughs> so we can't do much about him. But uh, apart from those who are gone long ago, like Jerome, and thus unobtainable to us, if he'd been obtainable, we would have gone after him. <laughs> but he wasn't obtainable. So we did the next best. Uh, who is the outstanding Old Testament evangelical uh, scholar on planet Earth? And Dr. Wilbur Smith. I don't know if I've ever told you this or not, please. Uh, Wilbur Smith said, you know, the outstanding man in the Old Testament, whom you cannot do better than, <laughs> is, uh, is Dr. Gleason Archer, my colleague on the uh, Fuller faculty. That is, my former colleague, because he had left Fuller by that time. So I contacted Dr. Archer, and I found out that he was mildly interested. And then he had to make a trip to uh, Israel, a study trip. To or, Beirut. To Beirut. Okay. And... Um, then uh, returned home eventually, and I visited him and his new wife and uh, their home, I think it was in Pasadena. I have geography in Southern California a little 
uh, loosely joined together in my mind. But uh, it was in his home there and got to know them. And to make a long story short, he decided to come out here. And of course, he has been, uh, he has been the head of the department then from that time for a number of years after that and has provided just outstanding leadership to uh, Trinity Evangelical Liturgy School and the Old Testament. I just want to say a word about Sandy, too. Now, I don't suppose Sandy has parsed many Hebrew words. Why would you say that? Well, I would say your family has done a no Hebrew parsing. There were other things that needed to be done, which Gleason couldn't do. And, and Sandy has done them marvelously. She's made a good home for him and his two daughters. She has provided diversion for Gleason so as to make him human. <laughs> and believe it or not, that was necessary. It was not easy. <laughs> Did you hear that? It wasn't easy. <laughs> I know that because I knew him before he was human. <laughs> <laughs> she's been a gracious and marvelous host in his home. And so we're thankful for him saying, as well as please. And uh, I don't know what you planned in the Old Testament department. They have prejudices in the Old Testament department. <laughs> but for all the rest of us who have been invited here, uh, we consider this in honor to you as well as to please. Now just a word about... Um, about what Gleason has meant to us. I tried to think, what are the distinctive things that he has brought to the school here and to the evangelical world and to the world especially of evangelical scholarship? And the first is that he has set a standard. He has taught it and, and he has modeled it. You don't get away with shoddy work in Gleason Archer's classes. Some of you who have had his classes know that. You told the line. If you say, well, it's about 87, that's not good enough. It has to be 87, or maybe 88, whatever it is. But whatever it is, that's what it's to be. Not some rough approximation of the truth, or rough approximation of what the right answer is. And that standard, which uh, he set for himself, which he modeled, and which he talked to his students, and talked to the rest of the faculty, has been a great contribution to those of us here at Trinity. And I'm grateful for it, and I think all the rest of our students and faculty are grateful for it. It's not always been easy. I know because though I never had a course from him, I was too young to have a course from him. <laughs> <laughs> but I had a son who had a course from him. And uh, there were two other students in your advanced Hebrew class. And my son tells me he never worked so hard in his life to uh, get a good grade as he did in that particular course. But after it was over and the pain was gone, <laughs> he was exceedingly grateful for what he had learned. He set up a standard and held to it and taught the rest of us by his teaching, instruction, and by his modeling that standard. And we're grateful to you, please, for it. Second thing was his spiritual commitment. Now, uh, I don't believe in piety. Uh, in fact, pietism always scares me off. But piety is a different thing from pietism. They're worlds apart. Dr. Archer exemplified true biblical piety. When the door of the church opened, he was there. And he was there usually until it closed. And, uh, and uh, in addition to the fact that he didn't miss the services of the church, I know because I go to the same church he is. And in addition to being a faithful representative in that church, he exemplified a true Christian commitment to the Lord. There was a personal relationship there. If you sat in his classes, you knew that this just wasn't an academic subject in which he, which he, in which he was the great defender of inerrancy or something of that sort. Now, he may have been that, you understand. But that wasn't always the first thing that came across. The first thing that came across, if you knew him at all, was that here is a man who loves God and who honors God and for whom God is supremely important in his life. He taught that, he modeled it, 
and all of us are exceedingly grateful for that. Third area, he was a churchman. He believed in the church. He taught that the church was important. He was a servant of the church. He wrote his books in part in each of the areas that he did because he felt that particular book was needed by the church. I don't think he wrote it because he thought that book would sell. I am terribly suspicious about a lot of people who write books. They try to calculate what book will have the most uh, sales and then they write it. And in a sense, that can make some sense because the books for which there is a need and will sell oftentimes are also the books for which the church has a real need. But, uh, but as I have observed, the way he has gone about his writing is because he has seen a felt need of the Church of Jesus Christ and then has tried to step in and fill that need. And his love for the church and his desire to serve the church and his active commitment to the church as the body of Christ he has taught and modeled and brought to all the rest of us. So Trinity owes a great deal to him. And when I say Trinity, I don't mean just an institution. I mean, first of all, the most important, important part of Trinity, which is its students. And then, in addition, the next most important part, in my judgment, which is its faculty. And he has meant a great deal to the students and the faculty of Trinity. He has built his life into it the last nearly 26 years, I guess. And uh, that's a significant contribution. The, the, the best years of his life he has given to Trinity. And so we are exceedingly grateful for what he has done. What Trinity is and has become is in very, very large measure due to what Dr. Gleason Archer is and what he has infused into this uh, composite mass that we call Trinity of Clinical Divinity School students, faculty, uh, former students, friends, and those all around the world who have learned through the members of our Trinity family and through indirectly through uh, through Gleason Archer's works that have gone all around the world. And so, uh, in a way, representing Trinity Evangelical Divinity School, I'd like to thank you, Gleason, and your good wife who helped you be what you are, as you have, uh, as you have meant so much to all of us. And what you meant to us, though you can't see them, you need to remember all around the world there are people whom these people will contact and uh, will influence. And other former students are now influencing and instructing and uh, modeling in turn the sort of thing that you have modeled directly for them. So the whole Christian world is grateful to you. Thank you.